Welcome, my friends, back to Module 4, Confidence Intervals, and this is Lecture 8, Why Have Large and Small Samples Inquiring Minds Want to Know. Take just a moment to observe this diagram. Seldom does one know mu and sigma for the population. Uh, if we can think of infinitely many populations that we would have no real clue right off the bat as to what the values of mu and sigma are. For this reason, we construct sampling to infer the values of mu and sigma from x bar and s. Now observe the diagram that I have here. To the right, we have a large population. In that population, we don't know the values of mu, we don't know the values of sigma, and we don't even know the value of kappa n. We don't know how many numbers of data there are in the population. To the left, we have a sample, and for this sample, we can certainly construct x bar. We can construct s, uh, the standard deviation of the sample, and we know the number in the sample. The reason we know x bar, s, and n is because we constructed the sample. We selected the number that were in it, and from that, we could calculate x bar and s. Now, one of the great goals of inferential statistics is to be able to take a sample and predict things about the population. In this first diagram, we have the sample, and for the sample, we have x bar, and we're going to utilize that to predict mu. That's what these confidence intervals are going to be founded upon, is the utilization of x bar to predict mu. Beyond the utilization of just x bar to predict mu, we're also required to use s to predict sigma. Now, there are some difficulties with this. S is a good predictor of sigma if we have a very large number of data in our sample. S is a poor predictor of sigma if we have a small number of data in our sample. Now, what do we mean by large and what do we mean by small numbers of data in the sample? Well, I will tell you that this varies widely across disciplines. In medicine, a large sample might be a whole lot more than what you would use in an educational study. Typically, textbooks will start out uh, arguing with you or presenting to you that if the number in the sample is larger than or equal to 30 that you have a large sample and that if the number in the sample is less than 30 you have a small sample. So just for argument's sake we're going to define large sample to be a sample of 30 or more and small sample to be a sample of 30 or less. Now keep in mind the reason that we're breaking these things out between large sample and small sample again relates to S being a good predictor of sigma. As the number in the sample becomes larger, S converges on sigma, and S becomes a good predictor of sigma when you have a very large sample. As, S beca as N becomes small and you have a very small sample, S becomes less and less a good predictor of sigma. Therefore, we're going to break out our utilization of samples for confidence intervals between large samples and small samples. For our use, for our discussion, large sample will be 30 or more, small sample will be less than 30 until we move to a point where we can show you otherwise. Welcome back to the dog house. This is the dog's old office here. You see stuff scattered everywhere. Well, you're making headway, friend. You've done well to keep so much hair with so many after it. Uh, I would remind you that you've just discovered something really cool. We've done populations, and according to our flow tree, or flea, as my wife calls it, we've looked at population, x-bar distributions, and, po and just datum, or regular data distributions. Now we're moving on to break out the difference between large sample and small sample. Recall that a large sample is n greater than or equal to 30. A small sample is n less than 30. Now, is that absolute? Absolutely not. It depends upon the application that you're using, but for our purposes in this course, we're going to use that divide. I want you to pay a lot of attention and put a lot of work in what's ahead of you because now when we get into taking samples, we're doing inferential statistics, and this is where the rubber hits the road. In a large sample, you use a z-score, 
In a small sample, you will use a T-score, which we're about to discuss here in just a moment. May the good Lord take a liking to you. I'm glad to have you in this course. Mm -hmm.